Hey everyone, a moment in the word. I love the word of God. I get excited about it. Do you? I do. <laughs> but anyways, today I want to just share a little bit more about Isaiah uh, 55. There's something that is really deep in my heart about this scripture in Isaiah 55 and verse 10. So if you have a Bible, open up your Bibles, open up your, your phones or whatever it is, and come on and let's have a moment in the word. Here in Isaiah 55, verse 10, we read, For as rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud. That is, is wonderful to know that it may give seed to the sower, say sower, and then bread for the eater, say eater. Isn't that something that God created the earth, the heavens and the earth and everything in it with a purpose? Shout out purpose. I have a purpose in life. And so when we see the scriptures and it talks about rain, uh, it rain refreshes. But another thing that rain does is that if we don't have any rain, we don't have any crops. And so here in the word, it says, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there. So in other words, I'm going to share with you that the rain would be like the word of God. As we receive the word of God, it's like rain and that rain of the word of God is not supposed to return void. It stays in our hearts. It stays in our spirit if we allow that to happen. All of a sudden, the word of God says, but waters the earth. It doesn't return. The rain doesn't return. And its purpose is to water the earth. Well, what for? I mean, why is it raining so much? Why do we have so much snow? Well, God has a purpose for the rain, even though some days, you and I are going like, I can't go to the beach, doggone it. It's raining outside. Well, I want to let you know that you need to rejoice when it's raining because that rain has a purpose. And here it says in, in the word, it says that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Isn't that something that uh, around here in Godwin, we have a lot of farmers and uh, during uh, this month, uh, they start to begin to toil the, the earth and don't know a lot about farming. But anyways, they begin to prepare the ground so that the seed can go in the ground. And then all of a sudden, you know, they do what I don't know what you call it. They kind of puff that ground up or whatever. And, and so to make it a little bit more fertile. And then the farmer wait. Well, I'm wondering what they're waiting for. Well, they're waiting for the eternal source, which is God himself, to send forth the rain. Can you all shout out with me? Let it rain. God, let it rain on me. Let the word of God have its way in me. And then all of a sudden, the word of God says that it may give seed to the sower. So the word of God all of a sudden brings that seed in the life of a believer or even in the life of a non-believer, all of a sudden the word of God comes and that non-believer responds to that word and it brings life. And all of a sudden that word becomes a seed in the life of a non-believer and it is a seed in the life of the believer also. Well, what does it produce? Bread. Well, what is bread? Well, bread is nourishment. Bread is something that we need every day to eat. And the word of God said, and bread to the eater. I don't know about you, but I want to. I'm thirsty and I'm hungry for the word of God. Are you? Well, the word of God will bring life, wholeness, and healing to you and to me. Because every word that God speaks to you and to me is supposed to people produce something. Now, if the word is not producing something in your life, it's not because God has not intended for it to be producing something in your life. I'm wondering if you or I kind of shut out the word of God, not pay attention to it. Oh, yeah, we might read it. We might go through the Bible in a year. But guess what? I'm wondering sometimes if we don't allow the word to have a way in our life. 
and produce the fruit and the multiplication that God has called this word to produce. God is calling you and me to pray for the rain. Lord, let it rain upon me. Let it rain upon the church. Let your word just literally soak me. You know how some people uh, talk about uh, what we do is we soak in the Lord? Well, I take the word sometimes and I just soak in the word. And I allow that word to have its way in my life. And I will repeat it and I will maybe share it and then I'll pray it. And then I will pray it and ask the word of God to be produced in a certain way. So it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So I believe that God is feeding us and he's feeding us by his word. And that word will cause you and I to grow. And it will cause you and I to grow in a healthy way. So why don't we ask God, Lord, I pray today, let it rain. Let the word of God be in my life. Let it refresh me in those dry and dreary places. Uh, when I'm depressed, when I'm discouraged, Lord, let it rain and let the rain cause the seed to come so that the sower uh, would be able to have the seed. And then all of a sudden that the eater might have bread. Lord, thank you for your word. It is such a nutrition a neutral, nu nutritious thing for us as believers. And sometimes we just spit out the word without understanding that the word is powerful. The word is refreshing, but the word feeds us exactly what you and I need today. Listen, this is Lydia. I'm here at Shiloh and we want to invite you to our services. Our services are on Sunday at 1030 uh, a.m. and on Wednesday at 7 uh, PM, and we're right here at 2271 uh, Autry Mill Road, Godwin, North Carolina. And this is Lydia. Listen, we're having a good time as we continue a moment in the word. God bless you.